Hi, I'm Bob Spinozzi, and welcome to another edition of Healthy Living with Emerson Hospital. You know, I'd like to think that all of this rain we've had is finally in our rearview mirror, and now we can start spending more time outside and enjoy the summer. But when you're outside, protect yourself from mosquitoes, poison ivory, put on sunscreen, and watch out for ticks. And that's the topic for today's show. Joining me on Healthy Living to discuss this topic is Dr. Michelle Delancourt, Emerson Urgent Care Physician here in Littleton. Now, prior to coming to Emerson Hospital, she received her medical degree from the University of Massachusetts Medical School and then later completed her residency in family and social medicine at Mont Montefiore Medical Center. That's in the Bronx, New York. She's also received a master's degree in health policy and management from UCLA. So let's go to Littleton Urgent Care and meet Dr. Dallincourt. Dr. Dallincourt, thank you so much for uh, having, having me here. Yeah, thank you for having me. We're going to talk about ticks. Right. So my first question, how do I know if I've gotten a tick bite? Right. And what does it look like? All right. So that's actually a question that we get a lot here at the urgent care. Um, people come in, you know, concerned that they have a tick bite. So the one way, the obvious way, is if you actually see the tick on you and then you were able to take it off. Another way is sometimes people have just a small local reaction to a tick bite and there'll be a little area of redness and that's just your body reacting to the tick. But frankly, um, many times people will never know that they were bitten by a tick. They have no reaction until they actually start having symptoms of having a tick bite. And you were, you were telling us all before we came on camera here that you're seeing quite a bit of activity this oh, year. Yes, I would say that every time I'm on, I'm either removing a tick or um, people are having questions about ticks or are concerned for Lyme disease. So yes, every shift, we, we've been getting quite a bit and the activity of the ticks have been a lot so far this year. So at some point, you're gonna start getting symptoms. Uh, it's gonna get worse. What, what are some of the symptoms? Okay, yes, so I should um, back up a bit and say that you know ticks, people are the most concerned because of the diseases that they can carry. Um, we'll talk more about Lyme today, but there's a number of illnesses, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, um, babiosis, other tick-borne illnesses. But, um, so these are all tick-borne illnesses that you can contract here in this correct, area? Correct, correct. But um, in particular for Lyme disease, so um, let's say you were bit by a tick. In order for that tick to transmit, so if it had that bacteria that causes Lyme, the tick needs to be on you for at least about 36 hours. So if you had a tick, tick bite, you were able to remove it, it was less than 36 hours, the chance of it transmitting Lyme disease in this example is very low. But let's say you know it was on you for at least 36 hours, you were able to take it off. About a week after, sometimes um, people say that they see a rash, and it will look like a red rash. And the red rash can, it will grow, okay? So it's expanding rash. Sometimes it gets a central clearing that we call a bullseye rash. So that's a common rash for um, Lyme disease. And about 80% of people will get that rash. Now that's early. Lyme disease has different stages. And so at a later stage, if it continues to progress, people will have more symptoms that will see kind of, seem kind of nonspecific. So it would be symptoms that almost like they have a virus. They'll feel achy, feeling a lot of fatigue. Um, they can even have fever, not feeling like they can, they don't want to eat much, joint pains. Um, so those are kind of the symptoms you can get. And then later, if it progresses, and this is even to months and years, it can start to affect your heart. It can affect um, your brain. Some people will get a Bell's palsy from it. So it has different stages from the symptoms. But generally in the beginning, it's the rash. Okay, and none of us want to go through that. Right. Right. So right. tell us some of the some of the things that uh, we can do to prevent ourselves from yeah. So that's the being exposed thing. to them. Exactly. I mean, we're in the Northeast, very common in the Northeast, and we want to enjoy ourselves, but we want to make sure we're protecting ourselves. So there's like the ABCs of when it comes to ticks. So one is avoiding um, places where there's like a lot of ticks, and those will be places with tall grass, um, shrubbery. Um, when you're going out in the woods, you, a lot of leaf litter. So what happens, ticks don't, they can't fly, um, but what they do, they crawl up 
those um, like the tall grass and basically extend their legs and just waiting for someone to pass by and for that blood meal. So the biggest thing is so avoiding those tall areas, making sure you're keeping your grass mowed. Um, so we can even be vulnerable to a tick bite in our own backyard, so to speak. Correct, correct, correct. Um, and so the second is um, bug spray. <clears throat> so that's the B. So having bug spray that's registered from the, by the EPA or the Environmental Protection Agency in order to prevent tick bites. So um, a lot of them contain DEET. Um, so spraying yourself with D or treating your clothes with permethrin before going outside. And then the C is for clothing. And so um, another thing for clothing is wearing light clothing. So the light clothing doesn't really prevent tick bites. What it is is that it's light so that if there is a tick on you, you're it's able to see it better. Sure. Exactly. Um, having long sleeves, having long pants, and having the pants tucked into your socks. And that would be the best way. So those are the ABCs, but then now let's say, you know, you went outside, you're coming back inside, um, you wanna try, you know, taking off the clothes um, as soon as you get in. And that way, just in case there's no tick on you, but there's some ticks on the clothes that has not fully attached to you yet, you get rid of that. Um, but you could take those clothes and actually put it into the dryer for about 10 minutes, put it on high, and that will kill a lot of those ticks. Then also doing a tick check from head to toe I generally say, you know, if you're able to take a shower in the first couple hours after getting indoors, and that way you're checking yourself. You want to check your hair. I've been taking a lot of ticks out be from behind people's ears. So they're tricky and they're very small. They're very small. So you want to just feel around and check everywhere. So those are different ways that you can put Now, it. a lot of us have, have animals too. Yes. And um, very easily, an animal can have ticks att attached to them. That is very true. And so you, the same thing, you know, so you want to talk with your veterinarian because there are different um, things that you can do to help prevent tick bites with pets, um, in particular dogs as well. Um, so you want to talk with them, but you also want to do those checks, the same checks you're doing for yourself, doing it for your pet as well. I've heard one kind of funny uh, uh, way to, to check your, your pets is to take a, an old fashioned lint remover and just oh, roll it yeah. on your, yeah. your dog or your cat. Yeah, so that's, that would work. But really getting in too, especially if you have pets with long hair and getting in, because they're sure. very small. Sure, yeah. Dr. Yanko, I've, I've heard uh, about deer ticks. Now in the area that we're in here, what, what, what specific kind of ticks do we have here? Yeah, so we have a number of ticks. Um, Lone Star ticks, there's a, different types of ticks, but um, when we speak about Lyme disease, we're speaking specifically about deer ticks or black-legged ticks. And those are the ticks that generally will have that bacterium that leads to, to Lyme disease. So in particular, this is what we're concerned about. And they can carry other illnesses as well, but for Lyme, it's um, the deer tick. Now, is, are there any, we would come here to Emerson Urgent Care if um, we really thought we had a problem. Is there any, anything that we can do at home to maybe remove ticks? Yes, definitely. So once you see that you've been bitten by a tick, the first thing you want to do is remove that tick um, because the longer it stays on you, it increases the likelihood of transmitting Lyme if indeed that tick has Lyme. So the things that you can do, so you wanna either take a fine tooth tweezer or if you're gonna use your hand, make sure that your hand is protected with a cloth or paper. And what you wanna do is take the tweezer and try to get it as close to the skin where it's, the tick is attaching as possible, and you wanna pull out. And you don't wanna twist, you don't wanna you know, make any jerking motion because um, the bacteria stays in their gut. So you don't wanna squeeze any infectious material onto your inside the wound. And so you take that off. Once it's off, so sometimes people will say, you know, oh, I think a leg is still there, or a little tiny piece of the tick is there. That's okay, your body will get oh, rid of it. Okay. Yes, okay. it is, but you wanna make sure that you're taking you know, most of the body the, of the tick out, and there's a little bit that remains, your body will be okay. Um, and then what you wanna do after that is wipe it with some alcohol or clean it with some soap and water, okay? You will, sometimes people will have a local skin reaction um, to the bite, so like similar to like some people react to mosquito bites, they get a little redness, um, but you just wanna monitor. Again, if it's on for less than 36 hours, 
your risk is very, very low of contracting Lyme. So keep an eye on anything that might happen after, after you've pulled the tick off, you might get some swelling for, for a day and a half or so, but keep an eye out to make sure nothing beyond that happens. Exactly, so it's usually more just like a little local redness, you know, um, from the area, but then you just continue to monitor it. So let's say it's been longer than 36 hours um, and you're concerned, okay, I took the tick bite, but I'm not quite sure. Maybe I happened two days ago, three days ago. So if that's the case, then you wanna come in and we can treat you um, depending, you know, if you're the right age and you don't have any um, reasons why you can't get the antibiotic, we can treat you with an antibiotic called doxycycline. And that's the only antibiotic at this point that has been shown to help prevent Lyme disease. Again, it's not 100%. So even if you do receive the antibiotic, I always tell people to still continue for the next couple of weeks just to monitor your symptoms, see how you're feeling. Um, another question that I get asked a lot too is, oh, I got bit by a tick, I saw the tick, can you test me for Lyme disease right now? And the answer is no. And the reason for that is once you are bit by a tick that we're assuming had Lyme, that it was on for over 36 hours, let's say, um, it takes time for your body to make the antibodies that we check when we're checking for Lyme. So it usually takes at least a week or two for you to mount that response. So that's why we say, you know, we can give you the antibiotics to prevent um, the Lyme, again, not 100%, but if you're still having symptoms after a couple weeks coming back, here to the urgent care center or following up with your primary care provider, and then they can do further testing for you. Dr. Delico, I have one other question. Uh, the summer has just started. How long does the tick season extend into? Yes. So, <clears throat> very good question. Really, you could say, you know, the NIMS, so the, the deer ticks, they have different life cycles, you know, starting from the larva to the nymph cycle to an adult and the nymphs are usually the ones that are transmitting this and they're looking for that blood meal. So finding any victim they can get to suck all that blood. Um, and so usually they're the most active in the late spring to the summer and even in the fall. So really a good um, number of our seasons, um, you can get bit by ticks that carry Lyme, that transmit Lyme. So we have a ways to go, don't we? We have a ways to go. <laughs> and we had a mild winter. So um, yeah, we definitely have a ways to go. Okay. Well, look, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you.